Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to our service. And this morning, as we are on Remembrance Sunday, we are thinking along the terms of remembrance and of peace. And that's going to be our theme, thinking about what is peace and how can we experience peace. We're going to start off um, with uh, a hymn together, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, How Vast Beyond All Measure. So let's join in singing this together. Shall we bow together in prayer? Our Father, as we come together today on this very special day of the year, as we remember those who fell in war, it does give us joy to think of one who willingly and gladly gave up his life for each one of us. We think, Lord, Father, of the words of the Lord Jesus himself, where he could say, Greater love has no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And as he looked at those around him, he could say, You are my friends. Father, we thank you for that great love that he had, that led him to Calvary, that caused him to suffer and die, and that led him to secure for us a wonderful salvation and father although today we will remember those who fell in service to their country we must also remember that one who died that he might bring us peace thank you lord for each one here this morning as we meet together in your presence we pray that your blessing would be upon each and every one 
We do think of those who are not with us. We think of those who are kept away through ill health, through family responsibilities. Lord, you know the reason, and we pray that just where everybody is, that you would be there with them, that your blessing would be upon them, and that they might know your nearness and your presence. We do pray too, Father, for all the things that surround us. We think of national and international affairs. As our thoughts turn to past wars, we think of current wars. We think of the war which is raging in Ukraine. We think of unrest in many parts of the world. Lord, be near to those who are going through times of turmoil and strife. May they know true peace in the midst of turmoil. And we pray that your peace, that peace which passes all understanding, may be the portion of those who are surrounded by hostilities. We do pray, Lord, that you would bring peace as a nation to Ukraine. We think of other parts where there is the need for peace. Lord, bless those areas, we pray. Be close to them. We pray too, Father, for our own nation. And we pray for the needs that we have as a nation. We pray for those in authority, that you would guide them and give them wisdom. And above all, above all else, Father, we pray that those who lead us may give example by following you. So, Father, we commit this time into your care. Pray that you would draw near to us and speak to our hearts as we ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. <coughs> now, um, Albert, are you any good at sums? A bit. A bit. Well, you can ask Zach to, Zach to help you, okay? Oh, hello, Mary. I didn't see you come in. Hi, are you good at sums? Yes, good. Well, I've got a problem. I've got a little story, and um, it's not in the Bible, but it could have been. It's that sort of story, okay? It's about a man, and he had three sons, and he wanted to give them all a present. Well, he had 17 camels. It's a lot of camels isn't it yeah and he said i want to share them my eldest son i want to give the give him half of the camels the second son i want to give a sixth of the camels no sorry a third of the camels get it right steve <laughs> the third son i'm going to give one ninth of the camels but you mustn't take any more or any less than that and you mustn't kill any camels so, if he's going to give half, what's half of 17? Marie? Eight and a half? Yeah, it's eight and a half, but you can't cut any camels in half. You can't cut any camels in half, that would hurt the camel. It's not good for camel's health. <laughs> So we've got a problem, haven't we? What's a third of the camels? Will that go? No. A ninth. Will a ninth go into 17? Well, actually it won't because 17 is what we call a prime number. You knew that, didn't you, Zach? Yeah, yeah of course you did. It's a prime number. It won't divide by anything except itself. No, that's add. That is not divide. So we got a problem. And the three sons knew there was a problem. They started to get a bit angry about it. And the eldest son thought, if I could get rid of my two brothers, I could have all the camels. It's not very nice. And the other two started thinking the same way. And they started arguing and fighting. And suddenly in that family, there was a huge argument. And the dad thought, I didn't want this to happen. What can I do? I know I've got a very good friend and he's very wise. I'll ask him for advice how I can sort this out because the dad was no good at maths at all. 
So he went to see his friend, and his friend was really quite poor. And he said, listen, this is my problem. And he told the problem. He said, I, I shouldn't have done it this way, but that's the way it worked out. And the man scratched his head, and he said, I tell you what, I'll give you a camel. What? I'll give you a camel. I've only got one, but you can have it. So he gave him his camel. So how many camels are there now? Mary. Um, well, he's, he's three, seven, three, 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 no, how, how many camels on there on the screen now? Add one to seventeen. Eighteen. There's eighteen camels there now. Okay. Now he said, divide them up. So half of the camels go to the eldest son. So what's half of eighteen? I should be asking Peter this, shouldn't I? <laughs> Mary. Nine. She, she lost one. Okay, so nine camels go to the older son. Okay, that's nine. Okay. Then he's got to give a third to the next son. So what's a third of 18? Don't know. I'll tell you, it's six. Okay? So it's six camels go to the next son. And a ninth go to the younger son, which is... Well done! That was very quick. Two. You were holding it like this. Oh, did I give it away, did I? Yeah. Two. And that left one camel, which the man's friend took with him and went home. <laughs> so he didn't need a spare camel. He didn't need a spare camel at all in the end. And everybody had what they wanted. Now, that's a little bit of a silly story, I know. But... <laughs> It, thank you <laughs> but it does teach us something very special you see when those three sons couldn't get what they wanted what did they start doing marry they started fighting which is like the war which is like the war albert you got it spot on there They, well, not to start with, but maybe it would have gone into that if it had gone any further. You see, that's where arguments go to. People start fighting. And it doesn't matter if you're talking person to person, or communities, or nations. It all starts with disagreements and somebody wanting something that somebody else has got. That's where wars come from because people want something else. Or they just want to take down the nation. Hmm, yeah. As we think about past wars and present wars, I just want you to watch a little video on the screen. It's called, Can There Be Peace in the Midst of War? So let's just watch it. Over a hundred years ago, something was happening that was going to change world history. That was World War I. Men and women of all ages were involved. People from all countries were involved. Men signed up to be soldiers to go out and fight. They left their homes. They traveled a long way. I wonder what that felt like. I wonder if they were frightened. I wonder if some of them thought they were doing the right thing or the wrong thing. They didn't know when they would be coming back. I wonder how that felt. When they got to where they were fighting, there were beautiful green fields and they built what they called trenches at the side. These were big holes that they could hide in. And they put up extra protection, things like barbed wire. And they used to come out from their trenches into this area here in the middle. 
to fight. This area was called no man's land. As time went on and the months passed, these beautiful green fields became muddy, churned up fields. They still lived in the trenches. They still had their barbed wire and they still came out to fight one another. Many of those who came out to fight were injured and many of them were killed. And maybe the soldiers on this side thought, but we know we're going to win because we're right and God must be on our side. And maybe the soldiers on this side thought, and we know we're going to win because we're right and maybe God's on our side. And maybe people are asking questions like, where is God? Is God on anybody's side? In all this fighting, can there be any peace? There was somebody who believed his job during the war was to go out and bring God's peace. This was Jeffrey Kennedy, also known as Woodbine Willie. He was a vicar and he went out to the battlefields and when people were injured, he would carry them back. When people were killed, he would carry their bodies back. And he also started asking some questions. Is God on anybody's side? Can there be peace when there's war and conflict? And he felt that actually God could be here, right in the middle of no man's land, with the people who were frightened, when the people were injured, and with those who were dying. And Jeffrey began to wonder, where is peace? Is there peace here? There may be peace right here in the middle of all of this. And you know, something amazing happened. Years later, after the war had finished, the soldiers had gone home. They were still living with all they had seen and heard. And out in these muddy fields, something incredible happened because colour, red and green started to appear in the muddy fields and they realised that what was growing were poppies and that is why we have poppies today to remember those who fought, those who were injured, and those who lost their lives in World War I. As we remember those who fought and those who fell, perhaps we could just have a minute silence just to reflect for that short time upon those who made an ultimate sacrifice.
Our Father, as we think of wars that have raged and of wars that are still raging, we pray that you would make us to be peacemakers, to seek that which brings harmony and unity rather than division and strife. Help us, Father, to seek the good of others, to show care and love, and to be supportive of those who need our help. We thank you, Lord, for giving us peace in this land. We pray that that same peace may come to other lands throughout the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Could we just take up that thought as we sing our second hymn, Make me a channel of your peace, where there is hatred, let me bring your love. I used to find great pleasure in uh, every day when I visited my aunt who lived not far away from me to have uh, a look at the newspaper to read the Charlie Brown cartoon, uh, Peanuts. And um, Charles Schultz, who writes the Peanuts cartoons, I don't know if he's still around, I don't think so, um, captured a lot of very interesting thoughts to put into these little amusing cartoons. Have a look at this one. This is um, Linus talking to Lucy and he's saying, Charlie Brown says that brothers and sisters can learn to get along. And then it goes on to say, he says they can get along the same way mature adults get along. And he says that adults can get along the same way that nations get along. At this point, the analogy breaks down. 
Mm. It's quite profound that, isn't it? Charles Schultz had a habit of doing that, capturing some profound thought in quite an amusing way. But it's true. The analogy does break down there. And it breaks down right down the series. Whether you're talking about nations or communities or individuals or families, deep down inside, we tend to argue. War and peace. The two of them go side by side. And there have been wars right from the dawn of time, right down to the present day. Of course, today, on Remembrance Day, uh, we remember especially the past two world wars. But there are other conflicts which come to mind. It was interesting last night on the Festival of Remembrance, uh, they featured the Falklands, law, uh, Fal Falklands War as part of the memory. And there are conflicts going on right to this day. But Remembrance Day, Armistice Day, takes place on the 11th of November, the 11th of the 11th at 11 o'clock. And of course that was the time and date when the First World, World War came to an end. World War One. It was a war of firsts. Some of them are on the screen, I won't go through them. But it was called the Great War. And it was acclaimed as the war that would end all wars. People were looking upon this as the final rationale. The final war that would sort everything out and everybody from there on would live in peace. It didn't happen. Since that year, there's been wars in the world every year without fail. We'll just watch a little video for a moment by Stuart Scammell from Cardiff. We should never forget those we never did know, those that shed their blood and courage did show, young soldiers that died, their futures erased, so that we'd live our lives in peace and unfazed. We should never forget those that faced fear, fought tyranny, oppression, and wrong that was clear. They died on fields often far from their home, so that we in our lands would have freedom to roam. We should never forget the mothers of sorrow, their children cut down, never knew their tomorrow. The loss of their children, their hopes came to naught, sad lives full of mourning and sorrowful thought. Yet what would you think if one sent his son to face the ultimate battle because it had to be done. You might think it strange, bizarre and quite odd, but this is what happened and this one was God. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross, to save us from sin, all its wrong and its dross. We should never forget the sacrifice that he made. He died for all sinners, sin's price it was paid. The fourteen eighteen war came to an end. The world settled into an uncomfortable sort of peace. But it was only 20 years later that war started to appear once again. And the picture of Neville Chamberlain waving the signed document from Adolf Hitler has become famous. His words were peace for our time. The people of Britain were glad. 
They still remembered the pain of the First World War, the Great War. They didn't want another conflict. But he was going to come. And suddenly the world was plunged into a Second World War, which went on for six long years. And so it continues. Conflict. Conflict that's global. Conflict that's social. Conflict that's personal. Conflict that's spiritual. It's very easy to look across the water and say, why can't they sort out these problems in Ukraine, in Sudan, in here, in there, wherever the problems are? Why can't somebody sort out the problems in the Middle East? But you know, if we're honest, the real problem doesn't lie across the sea or even across the street. It's personal. It's us. It's me. That is the root of the problem. Us as individuals. That's what Linus got hold of in that little cartoon. Yeah, the analogy breaks down on a national level, but it feeds its way down the rest of the chain, right down to us. Neighbours, brothers and sisters, we all feel animosity from time to time and that can flare up. The poppy, as we were reminded in the video, has become a symbol of peace and hope. And we wear them each year as a memory of those who fell. But what does it speak to us about? I saw this little illustration as I was uh, doing my research for today and somebody has put it this way that the, the two petals speak first of peace with God and peace within and as we look at the leaf which speaks about green and growing it speaks about peace with others and that's what I want us to think about this morning what is peace do we know peace how can we find peace? The problem started not with the First World War, nor with any war that's been raged. It started right back at the dawn of time in the Garden of Eden. For a lack of peace comes with rebellion. And there God had said to Adam and Eve, you may eat of any tree except that which is in the middle. The day you eat that tree, you will die. And they took the tree. They rebelled against God. And there came a state of enmity between man and God. Or you may say that's something that happened a long time ago. Ah, but it happens every day. That's us. In our very natures, we rebel against God. God says, you must not do this, and we do it. God says, you must do this, and we don't do it. That's our nature. That's how we are as we grow up. I learned very early with my children that you didn't have to teach them to do wrong things. That came naturally. We had to teach them what was right what was proper, how to live lives that were acceptable in society. Something that's got to be learned. How can we know peace with God? If by nature we are at enmity towards him, how can we bridge that gap to a holy God who is far above us in terms of righteousness and goodness. Stuart Scammell reminded us in that poem for Remembrance Day that one came. One came to willingly give his life for us. And Paul sums it up so beautifully in Colossians chapter 1. 
as he speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world, he could say, Jesus never ceased to be God. He says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Do you know that is an amazing statement? We think today of many who gave their lives. Some of them willingly, many of them reluctantly. But what did those deaths achieve in the long term? Oh, we remember people who fell, and rightly so. But this death, this one death that took place now and 2,000 years ago, was something that changed not just the course of world history, but the very course of eternity. Because Jesus made peace through the blood of his cross. That truly is wonderful. By dying upon the cross and shedding his blood, the Lord Jesus Christ removed that barrier that was between us and God. He removed the enmity. You might say he brought an eternal peace. Not one that was fragile and could be shattered in a few years. But one that would last forever. Paul could say similar words as he wrote to the Christians in Rome. Romans 5 verse 1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the world in which we live is crying out for peace. If you talk to people, they're, they're thinking on a national level, but deep down people are looking for peace within and to know that peace within we have to know peace with God for that is the very start of it all until we're at peace with God we can't know peace with others and there is only one way that we can find that path People try to achieve peace with God through living lives which are good, which are live for the good of others. Some seek it through religion, through attending church, through going through religious rituals. There is only one way to know peace with God and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through faith through trusting him as saviour, by receiving his gift of eternal life, by acknowledging that we have failed, by admitting that we have done wrong and by asking his forgiveness. Then and only then can we truly know the peace of God, the forgiveness of God in our lives. But when we know the peace of God, we also need to know the peace within. I can remember back two and a half, three years ago, when COVID first reared its ugly head, I was talking to Dean, I'm going to quote him because he's not here, he can't contradict me. Um, Dean, who you know is, um, uh, he works in the health service and uh, deals a lot with not just with patients but with uh, student nurses and nursing nursing staff as he spoke about covid coming he did give us a sort of time plan of how things were going to go because i must be honest when covid first appeared my initial thoughts were oh it's going to be like the flu it'll be gone in a few months he said no it won't it's here for a long time, and of course it's still with us now, as I found out this week. He said, but COVID isn't a big problem. It is a big problem, 
but it's not the biggest one the biggest problem is mental health because this is going to affect people and how they are inside and it's true there are more serious mental health problems now than there were three years ago and people are looking for that peace within the Lord Jesus before he went to the cross said these wonderful words peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid by knowing the Lord Jesus Christ we can know true peace within Paul as he wrote to the Philippians said these words do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus we got that the peace of God will keep your minds and then he goes on to say finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me put into practice and the God of peace will be with you not only can we know the peace of God but we can know the presence of the God of peace and then finally of course we have peace with others how do we get on with other people can I suggest we have to know peace with God first we have to really know peace within first and then we can truly put into practice having peace with those around us the Lord Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount could say blessed are the peacemakers they shall be called the children of God Paul as he writes to the Romans he could say if it is possible as far as depends on you live at peace with everyone do not take revenge my dear friends but leave room for God's wrath it is written it is mine to avenge I will repay says the Lord on the contrary if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty give him something to drink in doing this you will heap burning coals on his head do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good do recommend reading Romans 12 in its entirety it's a lovely chapter peace my time is gone and uh, we're going to after we finish we're going to stay together if we're able for a time of fellowship over lunch and we do hope you'll stay but as we bring this to a close can we just reflect on that do we know true peace something that everybody wants something we have to strive for and the way that we know it is by knowing God by being close to him by knowing the Lord Jesus by knowing him as Savior as Lord as guide as friend to pray as we bring this to a close that we may really know God's blessing and God's peace for his name's sake shall we just close with a word of prayer and then we'll uh, bring this to a close father thank you that you have promised us peace a peace which transcends anything that this world can give and lord we ask as the world around us is crying out for peace may we be able to show in a small way that peace that comes from the love of god something as something that is real and something that can be received thank you lord for this time together bless us as we go our separate ways bless us as we share time over lunch as we commit ourselves now to your loving care in the name of the lord jesus christ amen
Still my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change, ye faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best I have returned. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. I hope I come to the nothing changed. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, who waits and waits to know his voice. Thank you.